Just bounce to this. Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Brandon Clements and welcome to part 5 of the Substance Painter video series. Definitely click on the subscribe button right there if you haven't already to get all of our updates in this series. So, what we're going to do today is jump into Substance Painter. I'm going to show you a lot about the layer stack and hopefully by the end of this video you'll be, under, you'll be able to understand uh, how everything propagates and gets defined in that stack. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into Substance Painter. So um, this, is, this is where we're at right now. I went ahead and deleted everything from last time except for this color selection. Uh, you can get to the color selection by just right clicking and adding this in your layer stack so what we're doing here is we're just making sure that we're selecting yellow and we're gonna keep everything uh, propagated to the stormtrooper white okay so let's define two parts to the stormtrooper white to the white material let's add a, uh, a folder we're gonna put it inside it here and we're gonna call this the white plastic okay so everything containing the white plastic the color the roughness uh, whatever um, you're painting on or filling uh, you're gonna put it under the white plastic uh, folder so let's make a metal base folder metal base let me just rename that metal base and let's go ahead and put that on the bottom underneath of the plastic in the same folder so um, there we go. Let's add a fill layer and we're going to call this the met uh, metallic metallic fill. And it's just easier for me if I uh, make sure that this fill layer only has to do with the metallic properties. So let's move that all the way towards the um, metal. And you can see it actually changing to a metal type of shader. Let's add another fill layer and we're going to call this um, base metal fill color, something like that, something that's easily um, discerned. So let's just make this fill be as bright or as dark as we want this metallic to be. So maybe around 0.8, so it's kind of shiny. Um, Actually, I changed my mind. Maybe around 0.6 or so. It doesn't really matter. It's all up to uh, what you would like this to look like. Um, so after that, we can define what the base roughness is going to be. So let's say fill rough metal. And we are going to say what that roughness is. And let's just go ahead and move it all the way uh, maybe to like let's say 0.05 or so and that should be good for our rough uh, I'm sorry that should be good for our base for our metallic part of this material and uh, let's focus on the plastic part real quick let's fill it with a color so this will be our fill base color and we're gonna untick all this stuff and our color is gonna be around 0.8 or so looks good and let's go ahead and get another fill layer and we'll say fill rough and again we'll make it um, decently shiny like around 0.1 uh, just so our plastic looks pretty good and then we are going to actually create another fill layer and this will be our fill uh, plastic uh, our metallic so this will define if it's a metal or non-metal in the metallic channel. So let's just make sure that that's there. Um, the reason I have it is so that nothing from the bottom gets filtered up into the plastic. So um, it should look on their own. They should look like they are plastic and metal. And then we can start defining how the metallic is going to show through. And we can start painting and have different layers that are only like the paint rough layer and so on and so forth. So for example's sake, I'm going to go ahead and add a paint layer. Okay, and let's just move this to the top. And this will be our paint roughness. 
And uh, I just like to kind of work segregated like this. You can have um, these fill layers define more than one aspect, uh, but I find it easier to split them up and then it's easier to come back later and change them. So um, in our paint rough layer, we could grab anything, say like this dirt brush, and let's make this a little bit bigger by holding control and right click. And uh, if I grab my Wacom pen, then uh, I can actually paint a little bit of roughness onto this model. And, um, you know, we can always change this and come back and add different types of brushes or stencils. Uh, but we have it set up now so that we can just begin painting on this uh, paint layer. Okay, so if we turn on the plastic, you can see that that's completely coated and gone away. Um, now, there's so many different things that we could do to make the metallic show up again, one of which is just adding a mask. Uh, we could use uh, uh, different types of generators, but um, I think the mask is good when you just want to be explicit and show exactly where that's going to uh, be. So we could use a stencil for this portion. So let's come over here to our brush and let's add a stencil and you can use any shape uh, or texture that you import into Substance Painter. Uh, so let's try and use something that's a little grimy looking. Let's see. Let's use this grunge one right here. Um, so this looks really cool. We can hold S on the keyboard and middle click and drag this around. Uh, middle, or I'm sorry, hold S and left click to make it larger. I'm sorry, this is right click to make it larger. And left click will rotate. Okay, so one more time. Left click, rotate, right click, zoom in and out, and middle click to pan. Okay, so um, I get a little confused sometimes with the, with the pin. Um, so let's go ahead and just use this as our stencil and just kind of put that down like so and we can actually hide this uh, by just um, deactivating it again so this is maybe where the uh, the plastic has worn through and it's showing them uh, the metal undercoat okay so let's try um, adding something else let's use a generator um, this is really cool we can uh, select the generator and then use maybe like the dripping or the dirt. Uh, let's try the dirt and we need to invert this and you can see what it's doing is in the ambient occlusion parts and uh, in the curvature and the world space normal in the position it knows exactly where and how to use uh, the dirt. So let's just kind of mess with this a little bit, maybe add some more contrast to scale it back a little bit. And I think a little bit goes a long way. So let's kind of turn up this grunge amount. And then we can have this grunge scale so that it kind of comes up a little bit higher on the helmet part. And then we have like this edge masking as well. So let's tinker with this a little bit. Um, I think that looks pretty good for our purposes. And um, yeah, so this is an example of how you can use the uh, masks, the generators, and of course you can keep adding generators um, such as this levels to define uh, how bright or how dark this is going to show up. Adjusting the gamma can give you some more control. And it's great because uh, you can actually have different opacities for uh, the layer here. So you got blending modes and the actual opacity slider and you can have a little bit more um, control with the level. So you can reset and just check out what you like and what you don't like. Okay, so that's a, a really fast way to just kind of create a lot of grunge um, on this actual plastic part and if we expand we can see that we have our fill layers and then we can actually create another uh, paint layer so let me just create one and we'll say this will be our paint rough layer and we see that we only have roughness selected and we can come in and just create a different type of alpha so maybe like this fingerprint and let's kind of zoom in here if we right click and hold control we can scale this down. Um, you know, this is just for an example, but we can paint that into 
our roughness map. So there we go. We have some kind of smudges on there. This would probably be better used as a stamp or a stencil instead of just using it as a brush. So um, let's try using maybe some of the scratches. And we'll right click and hold control and scale this up a bit. And let's just paint kind of around in this area. And you can see how that affects our roughness. We get a little bit more scratch detail in there. So it works really well to have um, fill layers to define the actual overall uh, roughness and then painting on top of that and of course you can put these into their own folders and work however you would like but um, this way you can work and not have things come up from the bottom of the stack and affect your work okay so it keeps everything a little bit nice and organized so that's how you can kind of um, make sure that everything is being defined properly by using fill layers and paint layers and you can start to uh, create your own custom uh, painted textures. So I hope that helped, guys. Uh, I really appreciate uh, checking out the video. Uh, we're going to be coming at you with part six very soon. So definitely subscribe to the channel. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you guys enjoyed it. Uh, but we will see you in the next one. So thanks a lot and take care.